started so right we are very happy to have with us today dr thajuddin dsc pro vice chancellor he will give us a very interesting talk today on microalgae and their applications to mankind dr saab you can please start okay sir Uh, thank you sir for uh, inviting me to uh, deliver a talk on microalgae the potential resource for energy environment and health uh, is it my voice is audible yes you are okay okay so microalgae and cyanobacteria yeah, they are uh, very tiny plants microscopic plants uh, which have the photosynthetic capacity like uh, higher plants uh, it has uh, several potential than that of uh, the higher plants uh, and also bacteria and fungi because uh, it uh, it is a prokary uh, particularly the cyanobacteria is a prokaryotic organism it has the potentials of bacteria and also it photosynthetic uh, capacity it is resembles with the higher uh, uh, plants also so it has the twin potentials in addition to this microalgae particularly the green algae it also having a enormous potential which will be used uh, to our mankind for several ways uh, like we can explore explore Uh, these two organisms microalgae and cyanobacteria for food feed fertilizer fine chemicals uh, and combating pollution so whatever uh, area we want to work definitely these organisms are very helpful uh, because these organisms are cosmopolitan in distribution wherever you go if the sunlight and the moisture is there definitely you find the growth of microalgae and cyanobacteria these organisms are uh, you know resistant to almost all the climatic variations you can collect this organism in Ant arctic and antarctic poles hot springs uh, extremely bleak environment like salt pans where the salinity is uh, very extraordinary for example in the water there is no salinity we call it as zero ppt ppt means parts per thousand in sea water uh, the salinity is 35 ppt of salinity whereas in the case of salt pans more than 200 ppt of salinity is there so such as extreme of like uh, condition our organisms are very very luxuriantly growing so that these organisms are the efficient candidate uh, for bio remediating all kind of effluents because uh, you know the effluent nature it is in uh, inhospitable so these organisms uh, are photosynthetic organism grows very fastly and then uh, uh, it will liberate the oxygen through their photosynthetic activity so that bod cod and other toxic chemicals are automatically removed from these organisms here you can see this one small pond uh, it is a sewage waste water pond from bardarson university hostel you can see Not the bloom of algae that you are you see the bloom of algae if you yes, see sir. under the microscope you can see very beautiful creatures of green Hello. algae and cyanobacteria Hello. like can this mute can you please mute your mic please close your mic devgan yes sir please so please. among the algae the cyanobacteria previously called it as blue green algae initially it is coming under the algal you gave morning no because of uh, uh, you know prokaryotic nature this uh, so called blue green algae is uh, transferred to bacterial classification as cyanobacteria cyano means it has a cyanophilic pigments like the phycocyanin and phycoerythrin Uh, people initially thought that cyano means it's a cyanin cyanide producing organism it is not like that it has a cyanophilic pigments uh, like cyan phycocyanin and phycoerythrin so because of the prokaryotic nature it call it as a cyanobacteria and it has uh, you know nitrogen fixation capacity like bacteria uh, so that we, this organism is uh, uh, known for best bio fertilizers it fixes the atmospheric nitrogen because of the presence of uh, nitrogenous enzyme the enzyme convert the complex form of nitrogen into nitrate nitrite and ammonia so simpler form which can be easily utilized by 
the uh, agricultural crops in addition to this this organism liberating so many growth promoting substances like uh, indolacid acid ziprin and so on the, it favors the productivity of the agriculture so this organism is a very potential organism like a bacteria we can use uh, this organism for our welfare when compared to the bacterial uh, biotechnological development uh, this organism are, are more efficient because if you grow the algae uh, bacteria you have to provide a defined culture medium peptone bc beef extract and so on and the sterile condition is needed so cost of production in bacteria is very higher when compared to cyanobacteria it requires only the water and sunlight if the organism uh, if you are using the organism for uh, food or feed consumption you can use some simple chemicals if the if the product is not meant for human consumption like biodiesel and so on we can use the sewage water as a nutrient for uh, developing the huge biomass in subsequent slides i can explain more about this and uh, why these organisms are very uh, famous what are the advantages behind this if you see this slide it is efficient biological system harvesting the solar energy via photosynthetic it is a simpler plant Uh, simple plant the microscopic plant each cell is a factory okay so if you see the higher plants it has you know uh, leaf foot uh, branches flowers uh, trunk uh, roots and so on here there is no such complexity okay that's why it is a non vascular plants uh, lacking complex reproductive organs so that the entire biomass can be harvested so if you grow the rice you are harvesting the only grains and the grains you can remove the husk and then you use the uh, rice so the remaining part is waste here whatever the biomass you generated entire biomass can be harvested there will not be any use waste and uh, we can induce to produce commercially available compounds such as proteins carbohydrates lipids pigments uh, even antibiotics and so on i am not exaggerating just like going to the grocery shop pay some money and get some desired goods likewise you can instruct the algae by manipulating the media composition and condition we can generate uh, the biomass and then we can uh, get the desired product for example if you want a lipid higher quantity of the lipid grow the algae give some kind of stress definitely the organism producing the more quantity of the lipids if you want heat shock proteins grow the algae give some kind of heat definitely you can generate the heat shock protein likewise whatever the products you want just manipulate the media composition and condition definitely you can get the desired products and another important point is simple cell division most of the cyanobacteria almost all the cyanobacteria and most of the unicellular microalgae uh, reproduction is very simple there is no mitosis there is no meiosis only the amitotic division like simple bacterial fission one cell become two two becomes four four becomes so likewise uh, it is a uh, you know uh, the uh, explosive multiplication is possible in this organism that's why it occupies very important uh, uh, candidate in biotechnological applications we can grow in any kind of water so if as i said uh, if the product is not meant for human consumption you can use the sewage water or effluent water for generate the huge biomass so Shit. that the water is also remediated uh, during the growth during the growth biomass production if you grow 1 gram of uh, dry weight of microalgae or cyanobacteria it already utilize 1.83 gram of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so that uh, it fixes the uh, carbon dioxide so that it brings down the global warming and so on so it is a very efficient organism in this aspect so biomass production is very very simple you can grow in mud pots uh, any kind of vessels you can utilize and uh, you know only thing is uh, the surface area is exposed to sunlight that is the only uh, qu- uh, quality is needed it requires the sunlight and then there are now there are some companies uh, they have some sophisticated instruments techniques and raised bed ponds and so many other things every day we can harvest tons of algae this is also possible and uh, what are the adv- applications so if you see this uh, slide definitely uh, you realize that almost all the uh, future needs this uh, microalgae and cyanobacteria will fulfill for example uh, basic thing is the primary producers in any aquatic system even uh, rivers sea and oceans the primary producers are the phytoplanktons phytoplanktons are nothing but cyanobacteria and microalgae if you imagine if there is no phytoplankton there is no primary producers there will not be primary consumers like uh, small uh, protozoans insects and so on and if there is no secondary primary consumers definitely there will not be 
secondary consumers like uh, fishes uh, and uh, frogs and so, so many smaller animals uh, if there is no secondary consumers definitely there will not be tertiary consumers like uh, larger fishes uh, shark whale and so on so just to imagine this tiny phytoplankton micro microscopic phytoplankton uh, it reflects uh, uh, if there is no entire ecosystem will be imbalanced if there is no primary producers definitely there will not be any fishes if there is no fishes in the ocean there will not be any fishery population and again if there is no fishery population there will not be any fishery ministry so this the tiny plankton phytoplankton like microalgae and cyanobacteria you know it influence the fishery fishery ministry level then coming to the bio fertilizers so everyone knows that bio fertilizers the speciality of the cyanobacterial bio fertilizers is the nitrogen fixing capacity it uh, fixes the complex form of nitrogen and convert it to simpler utilizable utilizable form in addition to this it liberates some growth promoting substances also and also this organism liber excreting the huge quantity of the mucilage this mucilage imbibes the water and uh, uh, retain the water for a longer period so that the uh, soil moisture is also maintained likewise there are so many attributes are there for uh, uh, acting as a bio fertilizer and uh, coming to the food you know single cell protein uh, it is a very important uh, component for example uh, uh, among the Pyrena. various living organisms soil now occupying the first because if you are consuming the mutton or chicken maximum uh, protein quantity is 22 percentage okay if you uh, consume the egg it has 25 percentage of the protein if you use uh, the soya bean it has 33 percentage of protein whereas uh, the spirulina it has 71 percentage of protein this is the only maximum protein available in this uh, bio resources then coming to the aqua feed since it is a primary feed producer definitely we can use use it as aqua feed and uh, in our lab we developed one aqua feed called uh, using far medium valderianum that particular aqua feed uh, we transfer the aqua feed technology to one company at the cost of nearly 50 lakhs so because uh, this aqua feed is very superior than that of the commercially available proteinaceous aqua feed because uh, you know if you are uh, the protein content is just less than uh, 20% whereas uh, this aqua feed for, for medium we used it has 50% of the protein in addition to this it has the innate antibacterial activity this organism having the activity so the fish pond if you are using the aqua feed in the any fish pond it uh, inhibits the bacterial population so there is no bacterial contamination in the fish pond so water is ultra clear and also healthy so that there will not be any uh, bacteria based diseases if you are using our aqua feed then alternate to isotopic labeling so usually in uh, medicinal kits they are using some chemical dyes uh, so or some uh, radioactive markers for detecting the uh, pathogens or pathogenic products whereas now people trying to use uh, the phycocyanin and phycoerythrin and algal pigments uh, it has a, a unique property of uh, you know fluorescence capacity where it is using under the uv light so now people using trying to use uh, the bacterial or cyanobacterial pigments in the immunodiagnostic kits this work is going on and restriction enzymes everyone knows the importance of restriction enzymes yes it is available in the market in sigma and other uh, chemical companies selling this restriction enzymes but the restriction enzymes available from cyanobacteria it is very uh, less cost so very cheaper in uh, cost of, because cost of production is very very less it requires as i said only water and sunlight we can generate the huge biomass when compared to the bacterial and uh, fungal restriction enzymes then another component is the siderophores siderophores are uh, you know it is a iron binding chelators so it is medicinally highly important uh, uh, compound because if anyone having the higher iron content if you go to the doctor they will inject the diphroxamine it is a kind of siderophore the diphroxamine uh, enters into the blood stream it scavenges the iron excess iron and forms the iron siderophore complex once the complex is formed it is no more iron so our immune system recognizes this alien molecule and try to expel it so by this way we can reduce the iron content and also the siderophores are playing a important role in uh, artificial blooming so some organism producing the siderophore so the organism liberating the siderophore to the aquatic environment it scavenges the iron content in the environment and forms the iron siderophore complex once the complex is formed this is different form of iron so other organism cannot recognize this iron 
citrophore complex. So the organism liberating the citrophore only tag back the ion citrophore complex to the cell and the ion will be utilized. So likewise, uh, it reserves the future ion requirement for their growth and development so that it suppresses uh, the other organism by the uh, not uh, available ion content in the environment. So this uh, way, these uh, citrophores are important. And uh, coming to the biofuel, uh, I'm not going to uh, give any importance for biofuel because uh, everyone knows that. Uh, I'm not going to give the details of the uh, requirement of the biodiesel or biofuel. So because, uh, you know, we need the alternate uh, resource. Uh, people initially, uh, particularly the funding agencies, uh, initially uh, looking for the uh, Jetropa biodiesel and the several other organisms. Now they are interested to uh, funding for the microalgal biodiesel because uh, the productivity of the microalgal bio, uh, biodiesel is very, very enormous. In subsequent slide, I am going to explain. In addition to the biodiesel, uh, hydrogen, uh, butane, or bio butanol, yeah, all uh, energy based products are possible. And coming to the phycobilly proteins, uh, because uh, you know, now whatever we are consuming, uh, the uh, food, so called food colorants. Uh, uh, in sweets and uh, other food items uh, in long term. It is a synthetic uh, chemical uh, uh, colors. In long term, it has the carcinogenic effect. Whereas if you are using the cyanobacterial pigments like phycocyanin, phycoerythrin and so on, they are nothing but the protein. The colors, uh, the pigments are nothing but the protein. It has the nutritional value. There will not be any side effects. So uh, we developed some technology of blue color and uh, red color technology from cyanobacteria and uh, one uh, phycocyanin technology we transferred to one company at the cost of nearly 50 lakhs and uh, coming to the nanoparticles uh, no doubt any organism plant any plant higher plant bacteria fungi, any organism extract if you want to uh, convert the um, uh, any particles any chemicals to nanoparticle it is possible but the speciality of the nanoparticle using the microalgae and cyanobacteria is what are the size what are the shape of the nanoparticle you want? You can select a specific uh, microalgae and cyanobacteria, then you can get the desired product. For example, if you want a triangular type of gold nanoparticle, use one algae. If you want a hexagonal type of uh, nanoparticle, use some other algae. Okay, if you want a spherical nanoparticle, gold nanoparticle, you, you can use algae. Likewise, uh, whatever shape of the particle you want, you can select. We published some good papers in this aspect. I'm going to explain in subsequent slides on toxins. So no doubt, uh, don't uh, understand that all the cyanobacteria are, talk, uh, are beneficial. Less than 2% of the cyanobacteria are producing the toxins. Toxins also now uh, people using in the biomedical aspects. Some uh, pr proportions or some quantity of the toxins is killing uh, only the cancer cells, not the normal cells. Now this uh, uh, utilization, of, utilization of toxins in anti-cancer activity is now going on. And antibiotics, uh, actually, uh, there is no medicinally unimportant plants or microbes or bacteria or cyanobacteria, all having its antibiotic activity. And uh, the cyanobacteria is having a specific uh, uh, and virulent activity against some of the pathogenic form. For example, uh, ESBL producing toxic bacteria. That is extended beta lactamase enzyme producing toxic bacteria. If one affected with, uh, with this bacteria, whatever the antibiotic you treat, single antibiotics or combination of antibiotics, this uh, bacteria it produces the beta lactamase enzyme. This enzyme degrades the antibiotic and consume the antibiotic for their growth and development so that uh, uh, it grows very fastly. Now, it is a major threat in front of us uh, to kill the uh, ESPL producing pathogenic bacteria. So one of my uh, students, uh, now he is in US, uh, he identified one uh, organism called Oscillatoria accumulata, marine cyanobacterium. He identified uh, the anti-ESBL activity from this cyanobacteria and he uh, worked uh, very intensively and identified uh, up to the compound level of the antibiotic from cyanobacteria. He published this paper in Nature Group Journal the Journal of Antibiotics, based on the publication, he, he was observed in University of Texas uh, Medical Science Department. Then coming to the fatty acids. So, you know, all the fatty acids are uh, important for biodiesel, particularly the gamma lenulonic acid, GLA. It is medicinally highly important. It has the uh, heart's contraction and repulsion of the uh, uh, heart muscles. 
so this is uh, medicinally highly important we found that the hypersaline organism gastrophobic organism having a high quantity of uh, gla so we can exploit these organism for uh, the uh, you know heart uh, functions and so on so vitamins uh, there's no doubt uh, if you just type the vitamin content in the google search uh, Uh, in plants, you are getting several thousand units. Whereas, uh, if you type the vitamin content of spirulina or any other organism, you find that uh, several lakhs units of uh, uh, vitamins are present. So, I am not exactly just you refer uh, in the website also the vitamins of high qu quantity and the quality of the vitamins available in cyanobacteria and microalgae. Then bio remediation. So now our country is facing a major problem of uh, uh, industrialization and then. Uh, based on the interaction all the pollute, uh, pollutants the effluents are uh, emanating from the industries to the environment so that uh, our uh, motherland is getting spoiled so it is very difficult to stop the industrialization but it is very easier to uh, bio remediate all kind of industrial effluents using the microalgae and cyanobacteria because uh, the extremophilic organism we tested in almost all the effluents our organisms are very luxuriantly growing in uh, this effluents and it liberates uh, the oxygen during their photosynthetic uh, naturally the bod cod is uh, nullified and uh, water is become purified, purified and then we can use this water for irrigation as well as aquaculture so this is also possible and uh, finally anti fertility compounds so our country is still in a developing country stage because of the higher population usually women are victimized for birth control activities males are somewhat escaped so in our department one of my colleague dr tirunal sundari she is from biotechnology department he received one cyanobacterium called oscillatoria villii he tested the oscillatoria villii extract to small animals like frogs and then mice and she found that there is a 80% of the sperm reduction so remaining 20% the sperms are abnormal uh, you know usually sperms having a single head and tail and if you are treating the uh, extract uh, the, we found that all mall formation so headless uh, sperm tailless sperm single head with multiple tails uh, then multiple head with a single tail all are uh, mall forming we can proclaim that there is a 100% of this, uh, uh, sperm reduction so based on this result uh, she received a good project from ministry of health science uh, to continue this kind of research work on identifying the anti fertility compounds from microalgae and cyanobacteria and uh, just i like to introduce uh, how we we started from uh, the research in marine cyanobacteria during 1987 uh, professor g subramanian he was a founder of national facility for marine cyanobacteria he obtained one project from department of ocean development now it is called as ministry of earth sciences uh, we received a major project in this major project we are in, in our country we are uh, i am happy to say that we are the pioneering in working on the marine cyanobacteria at the time in india almost all the laboratories are working on the freshwater cyanobacteria that to on the biofertilizers nitrogen fixation and so on and uh, we uh, my boss established uh, a project in which we surveyed the, from nagur to kanyakumari for uh, marine cyanobacterial biodiversity and we tried to isolate identify and uh, develop a marine cyanobacterial jam blossom during the year 1978 to 1991 and based on our culture collections uh, uh, the importance of the marine cyanobacterial jam blossom dbt recognized our laboratory and uh, based on this work uh, later we received a major project for the establishment of national facility for marine cyanobacteria this is one uh, established center uh, we uh, developed uh, established at uh, uh, during 1991 at bardas university this is only uh, center available in the, the through, throughout the world and uh, we, when, when we starting the survey the environment is also very well diversified here you can see the sandy environment and uh, almost muddy environment it is inaccessible to reach this water because it is muddy and then rocky environment and some of the islands it has the coral reefs it is uh, not the stone the all dead corals totally occupied by the corals so these two environments rocky and uh, coral environment are the ideal environment for microalgae and cyanobacterial diversity and distribution whereas in this kind of sand uh, sandy shores because of the rough uh, tides uh, and uh, also the muddy area uh, the biodiversity of cyanobacteria and microalgae are very very poor 
and you can see some of the cyanobacterial growth in the uh, nature here one organism called plectonema in the sea grass you can see the very fine uh, threads like uh, uh, lingbaya species this is another different lingbaya confer white species and you can see this uh, very uh, uh, crustaceous cyanobacterium it is called uh, hormothamnin entomorphites so in us one paper published in this organism uh, uh, for uh, uh, identifying the anti aids compounds this uh, organism is available in our uh, country also and uh, here you can see the thick uh, mucilaginous leathery mass of uh, uh, cyanobacterium so it has a very thick mucilage this mucilage having uh, so, so many anti uh, bioflagellant activity and so on. Uh, now, uh, this kind of organism is useful in the desert countries. So, they uh, grow this kind of algae in tons and they uh, uh, deposit on the uh, desert sand. So, because of this uh, mucilaginous nat nature and also some bacterial activity, uh, the desert sand will be converted to uh, the uh, fertile sand. So, the, now they are gradually utilizing the uh, desert to agricultural land and de develop the uh, crop productivity. And some of the Oscillatoria species, this is the Lingua majuscula species. It is a very toxic species. Neurotoxin is there. And uh, this is another uh, nodularia species. It is also nodularian toxin. It is a hepatotoxin. It is a, the Lingua is having a neurotoxin. And as I said, the extremophilic environment like salt pans, you can see this uh, salt crystals on this, uh, and the salinity is more than 200 ppds. You can see the algal blooms in the unused salt pans. If the salt pan is not uh, disturbed for uh, at least one week, you can get this kind of uh, algal blooms. Here I am taking just uh, in this spot. Uh, this you see the red colored spot, it's a uh, salt crystals. This is the underneath view of the salt crystal mat. You can see the very luxuriant uh, uh, cyanobacterial growth. It has uh, oscillatoria, spirulina, and then some unicellular forms, and pseudonabina, and so on. So this organism is efficient in surviving any kind of effluents. So the, this is the ideal candidate for treatment, bio uh, uh, remediating all kind of effluents we tested. And uh, just I like to show, since uh, we, we are concentrating more on taxonomy, just I like to show the biodiversity, morphological diversity of cyanobacteria, starting from the unicellular form, colonial form. Because of the variations in morphology, we need not go for any biochemical and uh, uh, physiological or molecular biological tests uh, for identifying the organism. But just seeing under the microscope, we can identify up to the species level. This is the unicellular cyanobacterium. This is, you can see the filamentous uh, trichomatous cyanobacterium like oscillatoria, trichodosmium, and so on. And here, you can see the four slides. All are far medium tenue, but in different magnifications. But the colorations are different. So one is blue green, and is, uh, another one is purple, orange, and so many colors are there. Because it has the phycocyanin and phycoerythrin, both in one is to one percentage, you can get the blue green color. If phycoerythrin dominates, you can get the array of different colors you can see here. So based on this growth, we plan to develop some of the pigments uh, for food additives. This, uh, this is also possible. And this is the filamentous cyanobacterium like Lingbaya species, Lingbaya majuscula, and then uh, uh, Microcolia species, then uh, uh, Plectonima, Microhydrocolium, and so on. And this is a heterocystous type of cyanobacterium. This is called a nodularia spumigena. It is having the hepatotoxins. And this is one organic endophytic form. This is Richelia intracellular, which is endophytically growing in the diatoms. It's called rhizosolinia diatoms. And you can see the fluorescent microscopic view. The fluorescent colored cells are vegetative cells. It has the photosynthetic cells. Whereas the heterocyst, some gaps are there. So the gaps are the sites of the heterocysts because in heterocysts there is no pigments, so there is no photosynthetic activity, so it is not fluorescent. So because of the op absence of photosynthesis, there is no oxygen in the cell. So this organism's nitrogenous enzyme is activated in the absence of nit oxygen. If the oxygen is there, the nitrogenous enzyme will not work. So for this, the heterocyst forms are efficient for the nitrogen fixation. And this is highly evolved cyanobacteria, like uh, highly true branching, true branching and false branching, everything is possible. And uh, as a result of uh, from uh, 87 to 91, we uh, established a national center. After this, we got a huge funding for biodiversity survey. So far, we surveyed from Bhumi Patnam to Kanyagumari, Kanyagumari to 
Goa, as well as Lakshadweep Islands, we completed the Andaman and Nicomar Islands uh, for our biodiversity survey, and we identified a very good number of uh, uh, marine cyanobacteria for the first time in our country. And uh, this is the total number of uh, species uh, uh, reported from the mainland as well as the islands, 162 species. And non nitrosidous forms are uh, predominant uh, in their distribution. And uh, based on our biodiversity survey, uh, taxonomical survey, we established a very excellent uh, uh, culture collections of marine cyanobacteria. So uh, now it is in the National Facility for Marine Cyanobacteria. Now we have more than uh, uh, 900 strains of marine cyanobacteria. It is available in uh, almost all the students of our country, students, scholars, uh, and scientists, faculty members. Uh, they can just uh, apply online and then they can get the cultures. Uh, uh, in Within a uh, uh, week time, you can get it, but you have to pay some money, uh, nominal amount for uh, getting this culture. And this is the center we developed, the National Facility for It is the only center available in the country. And uh, now we got the international recognition also for this uh, Marine Cyanobacterial National Center. So based, this is uh, because of the taxonomic biodiversity surveys. Taxonomy is very, very important for uh, any kind of biotechnology so that uh, we can develop the culture collection. From this culture collection, we can utilize uh, any organism for our benefit. And uh, after 2004, initially I joined from 91 to 2004, I was associated with the Marine Cyanobacterial Center and we developed, we, after that, uh, I was transferred to microbiology department. From 2004 to till date, I, I am working with the microbiology department and I started the research. So initially we worked on marine cyanobacteria, we established the center. After this, we initiated the freshwater microalgae uh, after 2004 and we surveyed the freshwater ponds and puddles uh, for uh, biodiesel surveys. Here you can see the thick algal bloom, freshwater. So yeah. when I see this bloom, I got one important idea. So in natural environment, you can find the thick <laughs> algal bloom. Why not we artificially induce this kind of bloom in the ratio pond cultivation system? So that I applied one project for the artificial induction of algal blooms uh, in the ratio pond system. I got nearly 50 lakhs from DBT and we, we are successful in uh, developing the uh, induction of algal bloom in the ratio pond system. So the technology we developed and we can see some uh, planktonic collections and then plankton collections in the falls also. And wherever we go, we take our entire uh, research team and we identify the organism in the microscope, uh, uh, photomicrograph in it in the field. Because uh, if you are collecting the algae, taking uh, the algae to the uh, uh, laboratory, it will take uh, nearly four hours of travel. So during this uh, transition period, the protozoans and the zooplanktons consume some of the biodiversity of the microalgae and cyanobacteria so that we sit in the field itself and we uh, take the micro photograph of the entire biodiversity to ensure the identification of the biodiversity. Here, the students, uh, now the students are settled in India as well as other countries also who are uh, standing here. And you can see the very beautiful photo micrographs of microalgae and cyanobacteria we surveyed in all our freshwater farms. And we have a confocal microscopy, so we can manipulate the uh, filters. You can see the beautiful uh, pictures of uh, cyanidismus. It's a green algae, and then this is the Aphanocapsa species, uh, cyanobacterium. And this is a Crococcus species, it is again the cyanobacterium. And then this is the Gliocapsa species. So all are, uh, you know, confocal microscopic view. So this uh, confocal microscope uh, cost is nearly 1.3 crores. So thanks to uh, Department of Biotech, uh, the Department of Science and Technology, DST, first program, we got huge funds from this. We uh, purchased the confocal microscope. Uh, and uh, in association with the Antarctic Cyanobacterial Center at uh, Donapala, Goa, we published a joint paper on Antarctic cyanobacteria also in uh, Spain-based journal. This is the Antarctic cyanobacterial diversity. And uh, uh, another interesting paper we published. So this is based on uh, a movie I saw in a uh, theater. One movie, Tamil movie called Suyamaram. This, uh, this is a Guinness record movie, very jovial movie. So it shoot, the uh, uh, entire movie shoot within 24 hours. When I saw the movie, I got one idea. So if the movie is a very difficult uh, uh, task. They uh, finish this movie in 24 hours. Why not we initiate one research work and we complete the research work, uh, submit the paper within 24 hours. So that I uh, got the association with Dr. Pani sir. He's, uh, he's my MPhil teacher and he's working in uh, uh, Tanjavur College. 
so we have a collaborative research and uh, he is uh, mr murlidharan uh, he is uh, that time he was a phd scholar and muthu kumar and vijay kumar both are uh, scholars, scholars of dr pandisulam so we five planned we started from trichirappalli to tanjavur at 6 am in the morning by bus we reached tanjavur at 7 am we started uh, surveying the five different uh, fresh water ponds in and around tanjavur the survey the collection ends with uh, and at 1 uh, o'clock then after lunch we took the algal samples to tiruchirappalli bharathas university again it take uh, nearly 1 and 1/2 hours to reach the university uh, and water samples analyzed by dr panisam sir the group and uh, we uh, we worked with the microscope on identification uh, and statistical analysis everything we are doing in the bharathas university meantime 6 o'clock we received the water analysis data then by mixing these two data and make some statistical analysis we submitted the paper to acta botanica malasi chana at 11 pm so we started at 6 pm 11 pm we sub- submitted the paper and uh, not only 24 hours within 17 hours we planned very perfectly and developed a paper and submit this paper to spain based journal luckily the editor of the journal is a botanist by knowing our importance of our research one day research he himself reviewed and the next day he published this in online later on he sent the hard copy of this journal also so why i am showing this if you have a perfect plan we can complete the entire research within a day 24 hours not only 24 hours we achieved within 17 hours in a spain based journal in addition to uh, you know morphological identification i got one uh, dbt overseas uh, fellowship award i stayed one year and then i learned all the molecular based identification system using the 16s rrna 18s rrna its so many techniques i learned and come back to our country uh, uh, we uh, sequenced uh, uh, several organisms like marine fresh water bacteria subsurface bacteria fungi microbes so many other microbes and so far we deposited 624 sequences in the gene bank now we are trying to develop all the nucleotide sequences a barcode of each and every cultures we are maintaining in our germplasm collections and uh, um, one of my students he initiated the barcoding of uh, fungi uh, using the its sequences now gold system available in canada so if you uh, have a nucleotide sequence and if you submit it they will develop the barcode like this so now we have standardized the barcoding technique using the fungi now we are going to implement with the microalgae and cyanobacteria also and coming to spiral biotechnology most of the participants know about the importance of the spiral now because it has the higher protein content if you see this uh, rice wheat fish beef eggs and uh, compared to other uh, sources uh, the chlorella it is a green algae unicellular green algae it has a maximum 56 percentage of protein and spirulina it is amazing percentage of 71 percentage it is a very richest protein content so that uh, uh, we can use this protein a uh, simple simplified plant protein uh, malnutrition countries like somalia and other play, other uh, undernutrished countries uh, so that we can save their lives there, there is a huge demand for spirulina also in the international market here uh, this uh, spirulina is a uh, non toxic uh, even if you see the african country people they just harvest this spirulina from the natural uh, system and they consume within uh, without any cooking so it is a uh, non toxic it has a very nutritional value also and uh, another important point i like to mention here nearly uh, 10 years back i gave a lecture in engineering college on spirulina entrepreneurship program uh, this particular student asked several questions during my lecture he is a engineering student btech student in the first year i gave a lecture somehow he impressed my lecture then he came to uh, my laboratory with a recommendation lecture lex- uh, letter from my professor dr lakshmi narsimhan and uh, he requested me to give some uh, training so i was happily uh, gave the training to the student because he is uh, very much interested to develop a so fine law company uh, he has some barren lands it is agriculture it is not possible so that uh, uh, i gave a training brief training uh, for about uh, 15 days then i totally forgot this during the fourth year of his studies uh, study btech fourth year he developed a company called elixir and released the product so he invited me to release the product then i said uh, Uh, dr lv venkatraman from CF, cftra mysore he is the authority for spinal production we will invite then i invited him he happily uh, come all the way from the mysore he released the product now he is a big millionaire uh, 
uh, in uh, he is exporting this file now from this company and uh, here you can see his ratio pond he developed the ratio pond and he developed the product also and this is the product now this file now is available in all the medical shops like uh, neutralite uh, spinal capsules okay uh, three years back he came to my laboratory he said sir one good news sir i received an order from uh, uk uh, that is a six crore worth order uh, for exporting this file now. That too, we have to submit, uh, supply the order within 10 months. If uh, it is uh, just like advance, if we sufficiently supply the 10, uh, six crore worth order within 10 months, they are ready to give 100 crore worth order. So, likewise, uh, now he is very familiar. Now he is a millionaire. I am very happy to say that because of my lecture, one uh, student developed as a very good entrepreneur. Now he is a very good exporter also. And uh, uh, coming to the FICO remediation, I said uh, uh, this is need of the hour. She is uh, first student. Uh, my... uh, someone, uh, you mute this, uh, your mic. Uh, she is my first part time PhD student uh, in a college. She worked on the FICO remediation of hypersaline cyanobacterium. She isolated the formidium uh, 10 new KMD species, 33 species. And uh, uh, the, it, it survived in uh, more than 250 PPT of salinity in the natural environment. She isolated, she used uh, Industron Paper Mill Limited, paper effluent, and she found that it reduces the BOD, COD, and increase the dissolved oxygen, increase the nutrient content. Then whatever pH is there, whether it is acidic or alkaline, the pH is uh, uh, becoming neutral. That is pH is 6, 7.5 like that. She published several papers in good uh, journals. And this is her uh, test. This is the effluent, uh, finishing lagoon effluent. And you can see after 15 days, you can see the uh, totally the uh, color is uh, reduced. 99% of the color reduction we found. And there is no BOD and COD. It is uh, enriched with the oxygen. And another student now, he is in a uh, uh, woman. Uh, see, he worked on the crude oil degradation. So in crude oil, if you see under the microscope, it is a highly globular structure. So uh, when we use the formidium tenure, KMD 33 species, under the microscope, you can see the uh, disappearance or the degradation of the crude oil. So crude oil having a high surface tension. That's why it is a globular structure. The organism liberating some enzymes or secondary metabolites, it degrades the oil. So in this oil, there are two toxic substances. One is uh, uh, naphthalene, another one is anthracene. So when we're treating this organism with this uh, naphthalene and anthracene, we found that naphthalene is on, uh, uh, converted to uh, naphthalene diol, anthracene is converted to anthracene dione from toxic form to non-toxic form. He published this paper in uh, uh, biotechnology letters uh, from uh, coming from USA. It's a very highly cited paper in our group. And then uh, uh, degradation of the dyes, uh, rhodamine dye we used. Uh, uh, we used some uh, uh, green algae called cholesterol species. Initially, rhodamine D compound structure is there. And when we are treating with the uh, algae, you can see the broken uh, degradation of uh, the dye compounds. So we found that all the broken fragments are non-toxic. And this is, uh, you know, the rhodamine dye. This is our algae. By treatment, you can see the reduction of the color. And we published the, based on the molecular analysis, everything we published the, in Colloids and surface B inter interfaces is uh, more than five impact factor we published uh, by uh, Mr. Baldev. And this is the paper we published in Colloids and surface B. The impact factor is more than five. And uh, we published so many papers. This is an old record. We 27 research articles we published on uh, FICO remediation of uh, various effluents using microalgae and cyanobacteria and good impact factor journals. Coming to the agriculture. So as I said, it is a good nitrogen fixer. In addition to this, uh, uh, these organisms are capable of liberating the growth promoting substances like uh, axin, uh, uh, indolacetic acid and so on. To test this capability, we use some tissue culture techniques. Uh, you know, in tissue culture technique, usually uh, almost all the tissue culture laboratory, they are using the MS basal medium in which they amend the uh, axin, the hormone, growth promoting hormones like uh, axins and gibberellins. Here we use the uh, tomato seeds uh, for uh, tissue culture technique. Uh, and uh, this is the MS basal medium. There is no growth promoting hormones we added. 
here the second flask it is a ms basal medium with the gibral new added you can see the uh, highest uh, growth and this is the ms basal medium here we are not using any growth promoting hormones instead we use the extracellular product of uh, oscillatoria species this is 0.5% this is one percentage of extracellular product you can see the very vigorous and luxuriant growth of uh, 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 tomato seedlings so this is uh, 25 days old then we totally forgot this uh, flask and after 40th day we observed that because of the vibrant, vibrant growth the cotton plug is thrown away from the flask and all the plants are very happily coming out so why i am showing this slide so we need not spend money for purchasing the growth promoting hormones just to grow the algae you don't use the algae you use the algae for different purposes use only the extra solar products available in the surrounding medium we can you make use of this as a growth promoting hormones like that we tested the green algae we found that green algae there is no growth promoting substances we reported we used the chlorella and the cnidismus there is no growth promoting substance released from this green algae only almost all the cyanobacteria we tested we are getting the same kind of uh, results and based on this result we published in a paper by like journal of genetic engineering and biotechnology Uh, the two students, uh, Guru Sarvan and uh, Sathya Sajish Kumar, they are responsible for this uh, publication. And as I already explained about the citrophores, we use uh, the Australia saline. It is dominant in almost all the main environments. And uh, uh, this organism is uh, liberating the citrophore only in the ion minus condition. If the culture medium containing not producing the citrophore, only in the ion limitation condition. This organism produces the citrophore. And uh, another really important work, collaborative work, recently completed uh, using the anti-quorum sensing compounds from microalgae and cyanobacteria. You, this is uh, this will be used in the aquaculture uh, uh, field. For example, in aquaculture, uh, vibrio species is a very toxic species. It uh, forms the biofilm on the fish, and the, uh, ultimately it liberates toxins and uh, kills the fishes. so this is the biofilm formation so we have a collaborative work with alagappa university with uh, kartha pandian and veeraravi uh, it is a collaborative dbt project we found that uh, we use some spirulinous culture you know, as a feed so the uh, for example in the fish surface if one pathogenic uh, bacteria attached in the fish surface it liberates some growth uh, liberates some quorum sensing compounds uh, to the environment by the compound it attracts uh, Uh, in the environment similar type of pathogenic bacteria and attracted uh, towards the fish surface and forms initially the thin biofilm then the thin biofilm grows and forms a thick biofilm as a, as a matter of thick biofilm it liberates some toxins and kill the fishes so here uh, we use uh, uh, spirulina as a feed in the aquaculture system whenever the quorum sensing signals coming out from the pathogenic bacteria from the fish surface by sensing the quorum sensing signals this organism liberating the anti quorum sensing compounds to the environment so that it binds with the quorum sensing compounds it forms a complex so this uh, quorum sensing signal will not reach the pathogenic bacteria so it is a uh, forms a complex so that uh, it inhibits the biofilm formation so once the biofilm formation inhibition is there there will not be any toxicity so this is the eco friendly approach we need not use spend money for killing these vibrio uh, species by uh, using the kilograms of antibiotics uh, in the aquaculture system so this is a, a twin uh, advantage one is uh, it is uh, acting as a very good feed because of the high protein content also it has the anti quorum sensing potential it inhibits the biofilm formation this project we successfully completed we published this uh, work uh, in the journal of applied phycology with a good impact factor journal and another paper also we published uh, in uh, biofouling the student work, worked in this project uh, mr louis asga he got the degree now he is uh, in rhode island in us united states he, he was a, a pdf there and uh, coming to nano particle already explained the what all size and type of nano particle you want you can get it using the microalgae and cyanobacteria and uh, initially we want to develop the gold nano particles we use cholesterol species the green algae and formidian species it is a uh, cyanobacterium we use this for uh, developing the gold nano particle we use the gold chloride in the medium and we found that the cholesterol species producing the spherical type of nano particle and formidian species producing the uh, uh, rectangular or triangular and uh, hexagonal nano particles 
So, Mr. D. Mubarakali, he was the student at the time. He published this paper in, again, Collides and uh, Surface B Interface, uh, the very good impact of the journal he published. So, we can get uh, uh, spherical, uh, triangular, and hexagonal nanoparticles using this organism. And later, we found that uh, uh, cubical type of nanoparticle we developed by using the other red algae. You can see the uh, cubical type of gold nanoparticle. We published this paper in microbial uh, pathogenesis also. Sir, my time is there or? Sir, can I proceed? Sir, you uh, unmute your mic. So if you permit the time, little more time, I can proceed. Uh, sir, you can take another five minutes. Okay, sir. That's why I'm five asking. Minutes. Okay, yeah. I will go rush it fastly. All right. Okay. And we published several papers using the nanoparticle synthesis and then biodiesel. Everyone knows the importance of biodiesel. We use the chlorella biodiesel. And this slide shows the productivity of the algal biodiesel lipids. So if you use one liter, if you use one hectare of land per year, you can get maximum of 6,000 liter using the palm. Whereas if you use the same land per year, more than one lakh liter of algal oil we can produce because the productivity is higher. higher. And this is the, you know, uh, the botrycoca species, you can see the oil lipids are oozing out from this uh, uh, plant. If you're giving the stress, you can see the oozing out of algal oil. So this is the ideal organism for biodiesel. And then another student, he worked in the uh, uh, he standard is the stress condition for maintaining the maximum uh, lipid content. Now he is uh, a permanent position in uh, Rhodeskill University in Denmark. He published this paper in Biomass and Bioenergy. And we got one Indo-UK project of nearly uh, 1.5 crores. And we developed a biodiesel. And uh, thanks to DBT, we got one uh, mobile taxonomy laboratory. We use this laboratory for uh, remote places for uh, biodiversity surveys. And then uh, this is the uh, how we are developing the biodiesel. We just uh, stick the algal plate. We take only one uh, dot, one colony. From this colony, transfer to 10 ml. From this uh, 50 ml, from this 250 ml flask, the biomass 250 ml transfer to half ton flask or 2.5 liters. This biomass transfer to 25 liter water can. This biomass tra transfer to 125 liter tubs. So just uh, we are from a single dot. Uh, we are gradually developing the biomass for biodiesel production from this uh, uh, tab. Okay. So we transfer to 5,000 liter ratio pond we constructed. From this biomass, we transfer to nearby 35,000 liter ratio pond. This is the 35 liter ratio pond. And you can see this, uh, uh, I think uh, this is uh, video is not working here. Okay. Our governor of Tamil Nadu, he also visited our ratio pond recently. And the, you can see the ratio pond in the Google map also. And we developed the artificial uh, uh, induction of algal blooms using the microalgae and cyanobacteria. Particularly, this is only the chlorella, I can say. And this is another bloom we developed. And we installed the world's first installation of pulse magnetic field to enhance the uh, lipid production. So initially, we established a, a 10 channel pulse magnetic field because of the magnetic intensity. Next day, all the algae is died because of the high intensity. Later, we use a single magnetic field. And we found that it is an enormous, uh, amazing uh, quantity of increased lipid content we recorded. Uh, we used different frequencies. And then 70% of the magnetic field, we found nearly 55% of lipid. Initially, originally, the algae having only 22%. So after this treatment, we found that 52% of the lipid, that too on the second day. So this is a very ideal technology we developed and also we published this paper in a chemosphere, good impact factor journal and as well as the fuels. And then we harvest the biomass using the plankton net. And this is the technology, free moves out technology for drying. So this is our first patent we published in the patent office. Now we are looking for the granting. It is almost five years or over. No process is going on. This is the technology. And this is uh, the biomass, dry biomass is powdered and then trust certification. So here, this is the overall outline of our technology. So we harvest the biomass, extract the lipids. By trans certification process, we are getting the biodiesel. The glycerol is a co-product. And then remaining waste biomass, we are going uh, using fermentation technique. We had a class 2 butylicum. We developed the uh, 
butanol and we are using the zymo monos we are getting the ethanol so finally there is no waste so we are using only the uh, waste water and uh, uh, you know uh, okay this is i will, I will skip this uh, and the pigments you know it is very uh, interesting color of the color the spicocyanin pigment blue color uh, you can see the marine cyanobacterial blue color the fresh water cyanobacterial blue color the student worked on this uh, is uh, now uh, in uh, uh, jamal mohammed college as assistant professor we can use this color in ice creams and uh, uh, milk rose milk uh, you can use this as a blue milk and then uh, we have one red colored cyanobacterium higher fico erythrin content so you can see this cake is decorated with the purple color red colored cyanobacterium fico erythrin blue is a fico cyanin so now we mix this two fico cyanin and fico erythrin one is to one we are getting this lavender color so by this way now we are having a plan to uh, mix uh, proportionally with different colors uh, plant uh, based colors or algae based colors uh, we will get almost all the colors uh, so that we can completely eradicate the, the synthetic colors available in the market which are carcinogenic now we have different colored algae also the students responsible for isolation of this uh, colored algae now we have all the colors by proportionate mixing we will get uh, different shades of the colors and uh, we have a uh, different patent and a uh, us patent now recently granted and uh, this is our publications overall publications uh, particularly on microalgae and cyanobacteria now our citation is uh, crossed to 10600 and we have one us patent also and uh, this is one uh, good papers we published in high impact factor journals and uh, particularly this student he published three papers total 30 impact factor he published and uh, we have mou with uh, korea uh, china and taiwan and we have mou with the industry uh, uh, we mobilized nearly to, uh, 7 lakhs for uh, one, one month, 12 month uh, MOU and then uh, uh, 6 month MOU we generated with the uh, industry and uh, uh, some students from uh, abroad, they are coming here and uh, got the training on microalgae and cyanobacteria and uh, we have collaboration with the uh, uh, publication of 70 papers uh, with 50 universities from 21 countries joint publications uh, and thanks to DBT, the uh, in addition to marine cyanobacteria the science and uh, national repository for freshwater cyanobacteria also uh, the first phase uh, dr sangeeta from D dbt sangeeta she uh, declared open the building uh, during 1980 uh, to sort uh, 1918 after that recently we uh, completed the entire building and the entire building is uh, now uh, complete building is inaugurated by our vice chancellor and this is uh, our research team and we have an infrastructure of uh, culture facility almost all the microscopes available in our facility and uh, finally i like to show four slides in us when i entered in this us uh, during the spring season uh, i saw this tree it is a very purple color i thought that these are the flowers my guide dr sandra nairviki bauer uh, she said that these are all leaf buds not the flowers in some uh, spring season the leaf buds are purple color Okay, this is the spring season and the next season comes, it is a summer season. All the purple colored uh, uh, buds uh, become greenish. So because uh, this is sunlight, uh, very conducive environment, uh, the, uh, you know, flowering, everything is possible in this uh, summer season. Next season comes, uh, it is a fall season, the same tree, I'm sitting under this tree. Uh, you can see the, because of the lower temperature, uh, the, all the leaves are uh, uh, fall down. It's a fall season. The temperature is not conducive for the plants. The next season is, uh, you know, uh, winter season. You can see there is no leaves. The entire thing is covered by uh, snow. So why I am showing this slide is uh, we are uh, really blessed to live in the countries, tropical countries like India. We are uh, having, a, is, our country is one of the 14 mega biodiversity country of the world. So we have an enormous uh, biodiversity of not only microalgae and cyanobacteria, it has a very good biodiversity of plants, animals and so on. Only thing is we need a trained human resource to develop the so many technologies, particularly uh, taxonomists are needed. So based on this taxonomical identification, culture collection and utilization, we can think of any kind of apply exploitation of these our uh, native uh, biodiversity, then go for pet and product process, then only our country become the uh, developed country stage. So now uh, the younger uh, generation or uh, interest, they uh, give the interest on the taxonomy, identify the new species, explore the new species so that we can develop uh, so many products, process. Uh, that is, uh, again, it will, our country will lead to the developed country stage. So his final say, he's my teacher, Dr. G. Subramanian, because of his guidance uh, and uh, his uh, advice, uh, 
I become a, a one of the uh, taxonomists of this country. I developed also some national facility following him. I really thank him for uh, giving this parental guidance and so many things uh, he guided. Uh, and again, I thank uh, the organizers for anything, for anything sir, for giving this uh, wonderful opportunities to share my views. Thank you. If you have any doubts, you can feel free to ask. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sir. He gave an excellent talk and uh, we learned so many new things from you, which we did not know earlier. Now I have a, a point for discussion. What has more potential, the microalgae or the cyanobacteria? Uh, sir, in, uh, for example, in biofertilizer and then uh, antibiotic production, uh, these aspects, uh, the potential, more potential organism is cyanobacteria. Whereas in biodiesel production, uh, the cyanobacteria having a very less lipid content when compared to green algae, micro green algae. So in this way, the green algae we can use, exploit for the bioenergy and so many other things. But biofertilizers, antibiotics and higher lipid content, we can use, utilize the cyanobacteria, but it has a very higher content. Also, we can manipulate the media composition and condition, we can enhance the lipid productivity and other uh, antibiotic production and so many things. Right. Um, how are the microalgae and cyanobacteria of Andaman Nicobar Islands different from the mainland? Yes, sir. Actually, I, I have not published that work. We uh, have a culture collections also. We have a, a different stains. And we published one paper in a journal of phycology and other important journals. So we isolated, for example, we isolated the Sinigogacus elongatus. One strain from Andaman Islands, one strain from Latif Island, one strain from Goa, one strain from Kanyagumari. Likewise, we have a, we selected five different strains isolated from different locality. Morphologically, all are same. Morphologically, okay. all are same. It is Sinicogus elongatus. But when we are using the 16S RNA gene sequencing and uh, RAPD analysis, the banding pattern is entirely different. And also, if you check the biochemistry, one organism having a higher lipid content, other organism, the, it is not having such kind of lipid content. Some uh, secondary metabolites production is also different. So likewise, uh, uh, not only Andaman Island, even in, within India, if you are collecting the south and north, definitely there will be a uh, genetic level variation is there. Morphologically, it is same. So we published one paper, uh, interesting paper using the uh, cyanobacteria in biological journal. And also M13 fingerprinting on paper we published in a journal of psychology. Uh, we explain all those things. So it is proved yeah. that all are same morphology, but biochemically or genetically it is varied. Right, right, right. So have you calculated the cost benefit ratio for biodiesel production? Uh, actually, sir, our uh, ratio point system is only 35,000 liter. So in okay. this uh, limited uh, uh, thing, uh, we have to invest so many things. If you are having a very bigger, uh, uh, several lakhs liter uh, uh, capacity production, then only we can calculate exactly. Because, you know, uh, uh, it is very difficult to calculate these things because uh, it is a lesser quantity and uh, the, we are using the human resource. And, uh, you know, human resource, it is also cost effective. If it is a mechanized in a very bigger in industry, definitely we can uh, reduce the cost. And also, the, as I said in the one slide, uh, there are co-products also there. In addition to biodiesel, the glycerol, it is also value-added product. And then we are using the biobutanol. So, you know, the speed petrol. Speed petrol is a mixture of petrol and the butanol. So, butanol is also cost-effective. If you collectively uh, uh, think on the cost of glycerol, then uh, biobutanol, then we can uh, drastically re reduce the cost also. So, uh, so far, we calculated in the small system, we calculated the, it is 125 rupees per liter we can generate, but it is not feasible. So, if uh, we, we, if you develop the technology in a bigger race waypoint system, in an automated system, then we can reduce uh, to less than 50 rupees per liter. It is possible. And uh, Dr. Sangeeta Kasturi, uh, by inaugurating the National uh, Center, she said that, uh, no need of 100% uh, biodiesel for uh, uh, engines. Uh, only 20%, you know, the B10, B20, like that. 20% uh, biodiesel mixed with the conventional uh, fossil diesel, 
it is also we are, our economy will be very high so likewise she advised not only 100% biodiesel uh, you you mix 20% biodiesel with the diesel then only our then we our economy will be very good in status likewise she uh, delivered a lecture in a press meeting very nice it's a very good very good estimate and Excuse very well presented sir. with lot of uh, good slides hello sir anybody have a question yes sir i have one question yes ah uh, sir is a chlorella species or a spirulina species which one will give a more uh, abundant growth of biomass so both both sir so they are you select you select the different media so cyanobacteria the Uh, spirulina it has this uh, different medium chlorella it is a different medium okay. sir instead of uh, bg11 medium uh, mm -hmm. we what medium we can be used to grow so in marine cyanobacteria we usually use the sea water we uh, collect the sea water and add some uh, you know uh, phosphate and sulfate uh, and sodium nitrate we just uh, mix with very or urea and super phosphate in a very lesser quantity we can generate huge biomass in both cases that is a bowl basal media can be used or a fox medium for commercial production you need not go for this kind of uh, synthetic media you have to use okay. the water and amend the uh, basic fertilizer like urea and salt super phosphate then we can generate the huge biomass if you are using the conventional media composition the cost of production is very very high so in biodiesel we are using only the water and we use the waste water the sewage water as a nutrient so likewise you can generate uh, sir uh, while using photobioreactor uh, mm. how much of biomass we can use like i am using now 20 liter of photobioreactor mm. uh, now i am getting only uh, 0.16 gram of biomass only how to increase the productivity sir to increase the means uh, uh, add some nutrient additional nutrients you go to check which nutrient is most active and also the you know the uh, circulation system aeration or circulation these are otherwise if you want a higher biomass you can make some replicates or triplicates like that so the uh, capacity is uh, only limited because of 20 liter means only in 20 liter this is the maximum biomass what you achieved till you want to have more biomass add some nutrients or otherwise you uh, make the replicate or triplicate or quadruplicate like that or increase the Uh, quantity of uh, the vessel sure sir good evening professor thanks for your wonderful talk i am dr raja prabhu from mari mala college so i was inspired about the research in lichens especially the photobiont uh, isolation and the characterization of, uh, and diversity inside the tamil nadu entire eastern ghats and western ghats i have been inspired with that one only so in this case so most of the researchers are focusing in the approaches like applied approaches like biotechnological level or else biomedical level why most of the researchers are not no need uh, interested and at the same time they have sufficient facilities inside the uh, indian country so it is my uh, point of view at the same time uh, if you uh, like uh, single cell organism or else the multiple cell organism the spirulina and chlorella the previous one was uh, inquired about that so in this case so which is the best um, and the most diverse uh, uh, photobiont in the lichens so uh, can you please uh, explain about this okay so we Professor? have expertise on uh, cyano cyanophilic lichens so myself and my second phd student now he is uh, Uh, working in kamaraj uh, engineering college at uh, virudhanagar so his may, his work phd work is on cyano lichens so uh, it is very difficult to isolate the cyano plant from lichens he tried and finally uh, he could identify isolate the uh, cyano plants like uh, uh, afna caps or some uh, uh, unicellular and nostoc species isolated so we it is a very slow growing organism and uh, it is very difficult to isolate initially but i uh, gave the idea to use the lichen extract in the amended in the culture medium then only you can get the cyanobiont isolate so uh, it is very difficult to use the conventional medium like bold basal or any uh, bg11 medium for this one so uh, we use the medium uh, basal medium in which we use some lichen extract also 
then uh, we found the growth of the cyanobiont so likewise he developed the cyanobiont culture collection his entire phd is on uh, isolation of uh, cyanobiont from the lichen and uh, recently we got one major project from uh, dbt uh, in collaboration with my student uh, mr cyano uh, shyam kumar we got nearly 80 lakhs rupees for uh, developing some uh, uh, products so that pro project is ended and uh, you know some of the secondary metabolites having some antibiotic and anti uh, cancerous activities we reported so the that cyanobiont is uh, you know really uh, working good so now uh, he has applied another project uh, on uh, actinomyces associated lichens that project is uh, recently we completed that project also from dbt and uh, you know uh, the strain level variation is there whether it's a spirulina or uh, uh, chlorella what are the strain which strain you used so the even though it's spirulina there are so many strains of spirulina is there even though it is a chlorella there is so many strains of chlorella is there so you go you develop the technology or the media composition and condition for particular strain so you have to standardize which condition is suitable for your particular strain then only you can say that so you cannot generalize it is a chlorella we can use this uh, culture media it is not possible okay you have to standardize the media composition and condition for your selected chlorella species because there are hundreds of chlorella species are there chlorella strains are there okay i think i answer your question thank you sir thank you for your wonderful answer so thank if you, you want any doubt you can approach uh, dr shyam kumar uh, thank you sir definitely he is, uh, he is uh, basically first time he isolated uh, the cyanobiont from our country Thank yes, you, yes. you are the pioneer for the researchers. I know, um, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Sir, uh, sir I have one question. Uh, oh, please make it short. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, which filter material you used for uh, uh, filter the biomass uh, uh, for microalgae? We use only the plankton net and the cloth. Co which material cloth? plankton net cloth you know phytoplankton there is a uh, cloth is available in the market so it has uh, you know defined a four sizes also there so you have to get this uh, from the plankton net cloth or otherwise uh, you have uh, you know some uh, stacks of uh, cloth the ordinary cloth you can use okay so you extra filter the entire biomass so we need the remaining biomass for subsequent growth so that uh, yes. remaining biomass it will be the inoculum for the secondary uh, cultivation oh, yes, yes. okay yes. so whatever you can harvest you can harvest and make use of it okay okay thank you sir simple cloth material is uh, good otherwise if you want to use you have to use uh, you know the continuous centrifuge it, the cost of the continuous centrifuge is more than 25 yeah, lakhs no. it is yes, not yes, uh, feasible for not... uh, commercial production yes yes sir. okay thank and you, sir. Too. If anybody has a question, you can ask Doctor Sajuddin by his email or by telephone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you send uh, my email, I will answer. respond to you. Yeah, he will respond definitely. Because uh, oh. I exhausted most of the time. I am sorry yeah. for exceeding my time limit. No, no, it's all right. It's all right, sir. It was a wonderful lecture. We learned so many things from you, and I thank you heartily for giving this great talk to us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the nice. Uh, Thank you. Can we uh, have your contact, time. sir? Can we have your contact? Uh, my, mail ID uh, or my, anything. So, if you go to the just to type my name in the Google search, uh, definitely you can get yes. the, all the everything, all yes. the bio data. The bio data, the, it, it it will be in 180 pages. In the first page itself, you can get the phone number very and good. then contact, the email, everything. He is a very famous person, very popular person. Okay, so you'll have no problem finding his email. But my base is uh, my base is microbiology, so uh, I'm not into algae so much. So that's why. No, microbiology, algae is one part of the microbiology, you know. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's a microbiology. Yeah. But we will deal with more DNA and RNA only, genomics, proteomics. So that's why uh, I asked the students just to go to study botany and zoology in the UG course. And then PG, and then you, then you come to the microbiology or biotechnology. Then would be so if you are starting from biotechnology from UG course, you don't know anything about the plants or animals. 
that's why uh, basic thing you must be in uh, uh, biology life science or uh, uh, biological science if you study you have the idea of uh, plants and animals this talk will be circulated by youtube okay, so sir. you can see the talk fully by youtube again okay so you send that link okay. to me also i will also sure. circulate it with my colleagues so sure. i will i will send to you okay, thank you sir. very much sir again thank you so thank much you. thank you thank, thank you, you thank you so oh, so i'm leaving this session sir now thank you so much thank you